Recognize him? Well, you should. That's Joseph Gorman. Millionaire, CEO, philanthropist. You two have crossed paths a few times in the past few weeks, am I right? Yeah, what of it? This isn't your first time sitting down with IA. Which, have you stripped him? I didn't feel it necessary. Well, I do, Captain. All right, Banks, hand him over. So, why don't you tell me about your first run-in with Joseph Gorman, Detective Banks? What do you want to know? The case. Just give her the bullet points. I got a call about a body being found. It was early morning. A young woman, 30s. Looking like she got the hell beat out of her. No purse, no ID. She had a small tattoo on her wrist. The prince came back and it was Lori Edwards. Small apartment, no family. The record shows she ran a small dance studio on Fifth Street with Alexander Ferris. Ferris was the victim's best friend and co-owner of the studio. When was the last time you saw Lori? Uh, just yesterday. She left early to meet our investor. And around what time was that? Um, I don't know, four maybe. And who was she meeting with? Joseph Gorman. Thank you, Alexandra. Your tattoo. Lori had a similar one. <laughs> yeah, we... We caught them years ago, decided on a compass to remind us of where we are and where we're headed. <laughs> a tattoo to keep her pointed in the right direction. And where did it get her? Six feet under. So, Lori met with Gorman the night before. Yeah, I could tell right away. I could tell that guy was a dirtbag. So, what can I do for you, Detective? Well, I trust you heard about Lori Edwards. Yes, yes, poor girl. It's a shame something so horrible could happen to someone so sweet. Well, when was the last time you saw her? Uh, just a few nights ago. Uh, we had met for dinner. Personal? No, no, just business. And what was your business? I was an investor in her dance studio. She had such a passion for it. You know, many of those girls in her studio were underprivileged. She taught many of them for free. She had such a love for the art. I find it very interesting that a man of industry like yourself would invest in a little girl's dance studio? I wasn't investing in the studio so much as I was investing in her. You seem to invest in a lot of women. What do you mean? Well, there's Jessica Lynch, who owns a cupcake shop, thanks to you, and Patricia Hayes, who you helped start that hair salon. And let's not forget about Kelly Loveday and her used bookstore. What are you trying to say, detective? that you have a particular type. Tall, black-haired women in their 30s that have a dream, a dream that you may come true. But like every investor, you expect a return. A return that Lori wasn't willing to give you. I don't, what, what are you? Sir, you have a meeting at three. We should really get going. Well, I'm not done with my question. <clears throat> we'll have to continue this at another time, detective. What do you want? I want to talk to you. I didn't get a chance to talk the other day. I mean, you blended in so well with the background, I didn't even notice you until you were right up in my face. I'll get up in your face again. <laughs> there it is. That's the look right there. I bet you that's the same look Lori saw the night she was murdered. So what happened? 
Did she turn him down? Did she threaten to expose him for the creep that he is? <laughs> Imagine that headline. So what'd he do, sick his dog on her? So, how big was that bonus? Substantial. Justin Saunders, former employee of Morgan Security, three priors for assault and battery and a host of other violent offenses. You got your man. Forensics had his DNA at the site of Laurie Edwards. You solved the case, but it didn't end there for you. For weeks and weeks, you followed Joseph Foreman at his home, at his job, at his kid's school. This guy filed complaint after complaint against you. He even filed a restraining order. There wasn't a shred of evidence leading to her murder. Why are you so obsessed with Joseph Foreman? Years ago, a call came in. This guy said he came home and his wife had been murdered. I was barely even a cop back then, working crowd control. I can remember the investigators taking him back to the squad car for more questioning. And as he walked by me, he glanced at me, but just for a second. But in that second, I saw his eyes. He had the same eyes as a killer. The same eyes as Saunders. The same eyes as Gorman. You can tell a lot by somebody by their eyes. You can see guilt, a killer, or a villain. When you look at my eyes, what do you see?